Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you might be. Thank you for uh, joining me here at Coded Life. I'm Sam Basu, and it's Thursday. It's time for the .NET Dev Show, which was also the time uh, last week, because uh, I go every Thursday, and my camera said, I've just had enough of you. I don't want to see you anymore. So that was it, because <laughs> my main camera just did not uh, fire up at all. So I could not stream last Thursday. But I fixed it. Uh, looks like it was like um, some updates it needed, like firmware type stuff. But uh, yeah, I'm back in business. So hello, hello, and uh, yeah, how you doing, Internet? I am hanging out here. Um, you're looking at my desktop uh, today. I thought I would play around with something interesting and fun. Um, so you may have heard about um, Blazor hybrid apps, right? So if I do well, I think uh, the first time like they officially talked about it was the .NET uh, preview release, uh, preview two or preview three, or maybe even like preview one. Um, so that's Maui. Um, no, actually, it was I think. Hang on. Uh, six. Preview one. So this was back in February, right? So that was the first time they talked about uh, supporting Blazor desktop apps, right? And this is essentially what's called hybrid apps because you are mixing and matching a little bit of Blazor, Razor syntax with some native UI and they're calling it hybrid. Um, and right now this is uh, very much uh, kind of bootstrapped as in Xamarin forms, but that is meant to change with .NET Mavi. So hold on, I tried catering to Dan with country, but this country thing is a little, a little too exciting for me. I, I, I don't want to go to sleep, but this might be a little too exciting. Okay, if there is a soundtrack that's super numb, we will skip it. Uh, but otherwise, let's stay on ambient. Uh, it's a little more soothing. All right, so... Um, this is where uh, we started, right? And essentially what you see as Blazor hybrid apps right now is powered by what's called uh, the Blazor, um, Blazor mobile bindings, right? So it's, uh, it's very much experimental and uh, Elon, uh, not Musk, Elon Lipton and a few other very smart folks are working on this to kind of bring this over to .NET MAUI. So, um, we are not using as, many, as much of the platform-specific uh, renderers that Xamarin Forms used to do. Um, but um, I saw somebody do a very interesting demo um, on Blazor hybrid apps. Uh, because when, when you say hybrid, like they run on iOS, they run on uh, Android, and they run on Windows and Mac, right? So how are they running and how native is it? Uh, so I saw somebody do an absolute hilarious demo, which is Kind of nonsensical but just to kind of prove that it is native and you can do native stuff on on desktop with uh with blazer and uh, i did what every professional uh software developer would do i took a screenshot of what it was so i could try it out myself uh i can't tell you who it was or where it was because then i'll have to kill you over the internet because i'm we're not technically supposed to talk about it but again this is all open source so we we could talk about it and we could tinker so essentially, um, from a Blazor hybrid app, could you do native stuff and uh, essentially bring up other native apps? Um, so I'll show you the screenshot that I took. Uh, I think it's this one here. So uh, we will use this uh, as kind of a guiding stone um, when I write some code. Essentially, this is just taking input from another like desktop app and bringing it back into Blazor land, if you could do that. Uh, and this one is launching Notepad on, on Windows because it's hilarious. Uh, so let's try that out on Windows first. Uh, and then I'm going to also try it out on a Mac with like text edit. So could a Blazor app do native things? um on uh, on windows or mac so let's try that out so i'm still on a mac here so i have to pull up my windows machine which is a vm and the fans will come out because it's a macbook it's not terrible especially with the resolution down it's not terrible all right 
So let's start with Windows first, and then I will look at uh, the Mac side of things. Dan is saying, we just got to wait for the M2. Oh, oh. Uh, let me see if my chat stuff is working. Can I, can I show stuff? Yeah, there I can show stuff. Um, so um, the M1 chips and somebody, uh, they did something this week, like they're making Windows on ARM kind of work natively on the M1. Uh, and I've, I've heard good things. I mean, the mo most people that I've seen grab the M1, they are getting the M1, uh, the MacBook Air, which is not really a dev machine. It's, it's, it's very good, but it's not like a heavyweight dev machine. I, I haven't seen a whole lot of uh, benchmarks for the MacBook, like the Pro, the 13 inch one. Uh, yeah, maybe, so it's early days, who knows? Maybe the, maybe the M M1 or the M2 will get better and then we can um, do more virtualization. Okay, so let's pull up a Blazor app. I've already done the basics. So if you wanted to just do this yourself, you will start with the Blazor mobile bindings and, uh, and start from there. So while Visual Studio is coming up, let me show you what it does. So essentially you get this template uh, and then you say .NET New Blazor Hybrid and it spits out four projects, okay? iOS, Android, uh, Windows, and Mac. And right now the Windows and the Mac ones are kind of a little bit fake because they're not running on Maui, they're not running on .NET 6 runtimes yet. So this one, the Windows one is using the WPF renderers for, uh, for Xamarin Forms. And the Mac one is using the Mac renderer. Um, but it's bootstrapping the app and then it's running and you can still do the native and, and the, um, uh, and, and the uh, Blazor mix and match. Uh, Dan is saying, um, okay, I have to read your, uh, like I have to highlight your comments to read it because it's like small. So I, I trust you. Um, Pro and Air Mini for the M1. Yeah. Did the Apple announce a new event in April? Uh, I don't know if it's Mac related, but uh, yeah, it's always exciting when Apple does something. Yeah, I don't know uh, what the differences are um, in terms of processor power and, I mean, is it gonna be the same processor uh, with just more horsepower behind it between the air? I mean, no, it, it, it should be, but I don't know what the differences are. Um, yeah. So uh, let's let's start here. Uh, I have those projects, and I have the same project on Mac, and I have the same project on Windows. But that's essentially what I'm doing to get a starting point. Um, and uh, this is the app. So what I've done here is um, I have knocked over the iOS, Android, and other projects because I just wanted to run it on Windows. And you can see like uh, the the windows part like this blazor chat is the standard library right that's the shared thing and then they are loading up web view 2 so that blazor apps can load up in there and um, everything in here that's web ui this is all blazor stuff and this is what um, this is what renders the blazor uh, parts of it so could we do some native stuff with that so let, let me go around this first and you can you can see like on the app.cs um, this this file here like what they're doing is literally no not that this one here so they are running uh, main and then there are forms in it which is essentially uh, newing up Xamarin forms and then the Blazor hybrid app comes in and says let me paint the window and and we take it from there and it's using the the of renderers so all that is good if I um, if I go ahead and run this now before we start anything else you should see the standard Blazor syntax or the Blazor look and feel of a templated app and uh, some Xamarin form stuff mixed and matched with it oh I haven't done this build in a while so it's gonna take a minute to do the build it's Thursday for Visual Studio as well. Okay, now my music went super low. What's going on? There you go, that's better. Alright, come on Visual Studio. You can do this. Building. Almost done. Yay, and done. Okay, so uh, this is the classic um, uh, Blazor hybrid uh, app that you get. 
So um, this button here is a native uh, button on iOS, Android, Windows, and Mac. Uh, this counter thing is obviously shared, so I, I update this, it updates here and that, so that's nice. The, the counter state is shared between native and, and thing. And I had a, like a signal or chat room thing that I was doing, but anyways, like that's not what we're playing with here. This is just a standard Blazor setup. Can you do some native stuff on it, right? So. I think uh, everything starts out here on the pages here on is on the index.razor like this is what's rendering the welcome hello world and how is blazer working out for you and I think this is where um, this gentleman was doing this demo so I'm going to take a look at this screenshot so we have a button and we are launching uh, a few things on the button and this is kind of fun so all right let's let's add a button here okay uh, so and again I'm, I'm, I'm copying code so uh nothing to hide here i'm copying from somebody who's much smarter and just this is kind of a hilarious demo but it's kind of fun to see uh okay uh so let's say we say do something native okay um and we oops see i'm used to the mac side of things i did a control dash and then it went kind of half screen on me because windows doesn't understand that all right so we will do code here right there and um i think they had a message let me take a look yeah there has to be a message that, on how we show it so we will say h3 or whatever and we'll say at message now there is no message defined yet, so let's do that string. Do I do that? No, I can I can just say add just just message, right? And I can say hello. Will that work? Yeah, it should, because I'm not doing anything else. Uh, okay. So save that and quickly run this then I, I don't follow if you stood around uh, it's SOC for the internals uh, what, what's SOC? I don't know between the pro besides the chassis between the pro air and mini I'm trying to read your comment here system on a chip huh yeah, I, I don't know if it's the same exact chip everywhere. Um, like, is it is it designed to just use as much memory and as much like channels and hardware that it has access to? And how much can it scale? I don't know. Okay, so this works. So we put a button here uh, that doesn't do anything and it picks up the hello, which is good, which is good. All right, so now, um, we don't need the hello anymore but we need that message part to be dynamic so i'm going to go look at that stuff because they are using file system i think we need to bring in the file system it should be uh how do you do that do you do using no i think you need to do at ah, i'm not used to windows at using yeah all right all right and then i think it's system.io all right so here we are going to define a method called uh, get message from native app all right and we are going to make the button bring it out on click do i need to do at or no maybe we just that uh, let me take a look yeah oh it's at on click and then the void okay all right see I'm not used to blazer syntax all that much either okay so now I can say message equals uh, hello world right here just to kind of test that we are triggering this so hold on, uh, the, the fun part is beginning. This is so much uh, fun to kind of see this uh, in action. Okay, so it works. We are training the method and it's work. 
Dan is saying everything I read said it was the same chip, so my question is why would I pay for more? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Let me let me highlight this. So I I don't know. Like it, it would be a sham if they did nothing different and just slapped on a whole bunch of memory and hard drive and called it a pro. It, it's gotta be using more or be at least be capable of using more on the chip. Um, but uh, yeah, early days. I, I don't know. I don't know. Okay, um, so we have a method that is being triggered, which is good. Okay, now comes the fun part. So, uh, looks like we are going to var file path. <laughs> I haven't dealt with like um, text files in such a long time, but this is fun. So check this out. So. Uh, apparently path is the way uh, we deal with like the sandbox and the way it's treating uh, or any, any file system access really essentially um, so when we say get temp file name it's just randomly generating um, a file name and it's gonna let us play with it okay so we do that and I think um, what's the next step Oh, now we're going to write file write all text all right so here comes file which is part of system io dot write all text and we're going to say go do that on the file that we just created and this is where you get to enter the message enter something okay so we are essentially creating a new file and by default it's like it's a text file and we are writing that thing called enter something in it um, but we haven't opened the file yet right and this is where notepad comes in so check this out var p system diagnostics process start notepad file all right so var p is system dot i didn't uh like I didn't know, like you used to use like system diagnostics to bring up processes, but this is kind of hilarious to see. Process dot uh, start, okay, and then apparently uh, let's look at the overloads here. You got uh, file name, you got the process name. Um, wait, where's the program name? Is it? Oh, they're going notepad first and then the file. Okay. And you just refer to apps by the name, like notepad. And we'll, we'll try this on a Mac and see if like text edit works. Uh, so notepad and go open up file. Okay. Which is the, the file handle that we just have. And then I think you can type something now because now technically notepad would have opened. Oh, hey, look who's look who is lurking. Sultan Burnham, hello sir. Uh, what are we doing? We are um, we are writing a Blazor app that is meant to not run on the web. We are, we are making it run on desktop and trying to see if we can do some native stuff with it. Um, oh, and um, Sultan Burnham, while I have you live on the internet, can I sign you up for some work? I need you for a stream. I need you to talk accessibility because I will learn what I'm uh, I'm just scratching the surface, so uh, I'll, I'll I'll ping you. There's a certain day where I would love for you to join me. Yeah, smart stuff. No, no, this is not over our head. Doing the web the right way without a browser. Well, there is a browser. There is the web view too on Windows, but yeah, we are not. We are we are staying clear of being stuff on the on the web, because we are desktop. We are mobile developers. We are the cooler bunch, or so we would think. Okay, uh, so we. Um, uh, no, Chris, this is not smart stuff at all. Like I'm literally copying from somebody because I saw the hilarious demo of opening up Notepad and taking input from Notepad. So I'm trying to recreate that. Um, so we have a file and um, we have opened it. But uh, the next line of code is thing called wait for exit, which this is hilarious. Like I've never dealt with APIs like this. Uh, so apparently there's an API that says wait until that process exits and then you get input back, which is really funny. Okay, so now technically we would have closed that and I would need help. Uh, what was it? 
see message file read all text okay so that's pretty standard stuff okay so we do file dot read uh no oh it's file like not our file but just file api read all text and then our file right yeah i think that's it okay i'm gonna close this and hopefully this works. So what have we done so far? We have we have gotten system IO and we have uh, a button in our Blazor app that says, go read this message. And we have a H3 tag that's showing it. And then the button triggers this, mess, uh, this method that says, go uh, create a new file, give it a file name, and then write this in the file, open notepad, and then wait for me to type something and then come back. And when notepad is done, we want to read that input out because read all text is here. And then we want to stick this into message and then show it here. So that was the demo. And uh, looks like it, it should build. I mean, Visual Studio isn't complaining, but this is hilarious. Like just to show uh that blazor on desktop is native um we can we can do this and actually there, there is actually an even funnier demo i saw somebody um on on windows I, I don't know what the exact command is but on on windows you can from terminal you can uh or not terminal dos right you from command prompt you can actually wipe your uh other drives so somebody said like wipe my c drive when they're running windows on the c drive so it did try and then it that then it kind of warned that you're about to delete the os and so on so it was funny um so this is all trying to prove that it is native and you do have access to some of the native apis so let let's try this okay um should i put breakpoints or yeah just let it let it fly let's see Okay, fingers crossed. All right, we got the button. Do something native. <laughs> this is so funny. Notepad comes up. It works. It works. Oh, you see that this temp 480f. Uh, this is this is what the what the name is of the file that we said. And it, this said enter something. Okay, now this is the part I'm not sure uh, if it will capture it all, but maybe it will. Hello world. Okay. Um, I think I need to save, right? And see the temp file name didn't change. And then if I close it, <laughs> it's right here. All right, this is this is what I've, I found just really funny that you can do this from a Blazor app because uh, it's running on desktop, but it does have some hooks to do native stuff. And I, I wrote about this, so uh, uh, hang on, not edge here, no, no, force exit. Um, here, um, if you do a, so, no, I'm still on edge. What happened? No, get me back on Chrome. So, um, laser on desktop, I think. Yeah. So there are, I mean, this is nothing new. This, there are two ways of doing this, right? We have always done electron, which is what visual studio code and, uh, Slack and Figma and everybody else uses electron, uh, bundles in Chromium and Node.js. So it's a little bit, um, heavier, but electron gives you um very good like native api access um did i have a link to some of their apis um no maybe not but uh somebody from the electron team had actually reached out to say hey we can do things like run things outside the sandbox we can go in kiosk mode we can screen record we have system tray support so electron is kind of very much um, it, it gives you like deep API access into the native world uh, in which you are running, but uh, the web views are not supposed to do that uh, because web views are meant to be lightweight. They, you, you're not packing Chromium, <coughs> excuse me, and you're not packing uh, um, uh, Edge or um, um, Node.js runtime. So this is meant to be a little bit more lightweight, but you can still do stuff like this. You can. You can uh, fire up apparently Notepad, because um, if you can do this, like you can do other things, like you you do have access to the system processes right here, so you can fire up other things and you know read from other apps uh, if if they're not running in a sandbox. But this is fun because now you're not quite in the browser sandbox. You are you're literally stepping outside and bringing something in um, to do this on on uh, on a Blazor app. 
So that's the demo. I saw somebody do it. I, I thought it was hilarious. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> okay, so Windows works. Um, any questions, chat room? Any, anything crazy you want me to do? Let me know. Let me know. Uh, if not, I'm going to um, switch over to the Mac side where I'm more comfortable, but things also get a little more tricky maybe. Um, so, Blazor on Windows with Notepad works. It works. Alright, just to save some resources, I'm going to shut down my VM. Go away VM. And gone. And we're going to kill that. And we're going to kill this. All right. So let's pull up um, with Studio on Mac. Now. All right. Same app. <clears throat> I don't know if any of you um, tuned into .NET Conf, which happened, I think, in March, and I was talking about Blazor on uh, on desktop and doing uh, SignalR-powered backend, and uh, I had a, just a classic and fantastic uh, demo failure because my Azure service would not wake up. Um, so, yeah, we, we do things live, you sometimes see uh, the ugly side of it, but again, that's, that's the reality. Um, actually, let me see if, if that will still work here. Um, let me see. No, I actually have it plugged into my uh, to my backend, so this might actually work. So um, so now I'm showing you the um, uh, the same app, but now it's on um, on a Mac. So I'll do the one thing that really bothers the Visual Studio on Windows folks, because this is the one thing where VS4 Mac wins out. Uh, you see, like I can go in my Solution Explorer and I can go Command plus plus. No, not on the code. I can go here and go like this, which you can't on Windows. Haha, <laughs> take that. <laughs> but um, same app, right? So what I've done here is, or I, I don't know if Windows can do it. Uh, I just knew Mac can. Um, so here I have, um, I have the same app. This is the Blazor Chat app. Uh, same exact code as what you saw on Windows. Here I have taken out Android and I've taken out Windows, but I do have iOS and I do have Mac. Uh, so same app. Um, so here you can see like uh, on the main Razor view, we are doing the native stuff, which is all Xamarin Forms, renders it through the Mac renderers. Um, Solomon Burnham is saying that's a sweet feature. Which, which one is a sweet feature? My face? No, or which one are you talking about? Everything is sweet here. <laughs> I'm messing with you. I'm messing with you, my friend. Um, but, uh, oh, you meant the, the zooming part, maybe. Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, like Visual Studio for Mac has things that are not quite feature parity with Windows, but this is one thing we can do, which I think Windows cannot yet. Um, anyways, so um, here you have uh, straight up XAML, which should all be native, and then everything that we render inside the Blazor Web View, uh, here it's actually going to use uh, what's called the WK Web View, which is the Safari one. Um, uh, what's it called? Um, uh, the Safari Engine, I forget. Um, I'm, I'm just drawing a blank, but the Safari Engine, like it, uh, it gives you a web view. And that's where you launch it and everything that's blazer shows up inside of that right so um, if I if I run this now it should run on the Mac WebKit, yes thank you thank you oh no we have errors oh no what are these nougat packages all right, I haven't clearly built this in a while. All right, let's 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 build one at a time and see what we are missing out. That builds. So the standard project builds, that builds. So what are you complaining about? Huh? What the heck? <laughs> so that worked. Um, 
see this is what um, uh, I think I mentioned this on stream a few times like when like we developers would much rather see something fail because like we know why it's not working um, thank you for the follow um, but when something doesn't work or when something works and we don't know why it's working it's more bothersome so I don't know what was wrong with that build um, but clearly uh, it is working so uh, same deal um, we can increment things here the counter is shared which we can come down here we can see it increments so it's shared that's nice uh, and, and this is the part that I was doing the chat room so essentially what I'm doing in the chat room is um, we have a little bit of HTML here which is just giving you the two input boxes and um, behind the scenes when the page loads up we are connecting up uh, in this case I'm, I can do this on localhost but I'm actually using my Azure service here, which died um, in a glorious fashion on a live demo with hundreds of people watching, which is fine. Uh, but then uh, we are starting up a hub uh, connection to that uh, to that backend, and then we are mis receiving messages to it, which I think I might still actually have that thing up. Let me see. Um, yeah, I have it bookmarked somewhere. Yeah, maybe here. Okay, uh, I'm showing you the URL uh, internet. Don't be nasty. Uh, but uh, I think this, uh, you know, where is my app? Where's my app gone? Yeah, so if I come down to the chat room here, um, so can I still do this if, if it's still up? I haven't done this in a while. Like the last time my demo failed, I have like have a broken heart, so I haven't tried this. Oh yeah, it, it, now it works because it, it can connect. So Blazor uh, says hi. Yeah, so. So you got a desktop and uh, a web app um, talking to each other, right? Yeah, some Blazor is right here. So that's good. Dan Siegel is saying, my favorite shirt, this doesn't work, why? <laughs> this doesn't work, why? Uh, that's classic. Yeah, the, the thing we hate the most is when we uh, see something is working, but we don't know why it's working. It's, it's very bothersome. Um, okay, uh, so this, this app is still working, good to know, and it's connecting up to the service. But uh, can I do what we just did um, on 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 Windows, right? And I, I was looking around a little bit. I, I don't know exactly how to do this, um, but I can show you. Uh, just last night, I was just looking around on how to do this. Now, here, here's the difference, though. Um, here, like when on a Mac, the way this works is like if I look at the app delegate, like um this is not like this is only as native as xamarin renderers are it's it's and, and same on windows right so essentially we have this ns application we are moving up xamarin forms we're loading it up and we are letting it do its thing um so uh i, I don't know where exactly I would, I would add that code maybe we can just add it to the blazor thing um but uh, let me show you what i found so oh, i keep clicking on edge sorry uh, back on Chrome, I found um, a couple of Stack Overflow things. So let me bump it up. So uh, people have talked about how do you programmatically launch something? Because now, so the, the thing is, um, when we are running this Blazor on uh, desktop, um, we are not quite using AppKit. I mean, in, in a way you are using AppKit, but uh, all you're doing is just like, give me the window and then I'm going to paint it with Xamarin Forms or, or .NET MAUI in future. Um, but I, I found folks like being able to just launch something from the terminal. We can launch like text edit from the terminal. Um, uh, but uh, like th this looks like is the way to launch it um, from like AppKit code. Uh, if, if we might so let, let's let's do this actually uh, now what, what I don't know is like uh, can I give it a name uh, and then so on that I don't know if we have APIs for that but let's let's do this actually hang on let's um, or open up the corresponding thing text edit okay so this is notepad for wait what is this no I don't want finder oh it's asking me to open a new doc what the heck just give me the app why is it doing that? Uh, okay. File new. Just give me a new. That, that's it. That's more like it. Okay. So uh, let's just say some text. Okay. And I want to save this. Um, 
<laughs> see, I don't know if I should save this in the in the folder where the app is running, or I, I don't know. Let's let's just save it on my like home directory. Um, okay, so we're gonna call it some file. Um, file format. Uh, yeah, rich text is fine. Whatever. It's not txt, right? It's uh, save. How did it save it? Um, go back here. Oh, so there's some file. So it is. Uh, okay, I don't know what the file extension, but it, it is some text. It's it's clearly showing up here. So, all right. So that that's the file. Um, now, this is where I'm, I'm I'm confused. Like, so I also looked up like how Xamarin on Mac will do it because like that is like straight up. Um, uh, this is like straight up C sharp, right? So we can do this from C sharp, but I don't know if we can do this from app kit Because like we can we can open up a file and we can read the contents contents of the file here But let, let's try this one first um, If we have to get access to the NS workspace, which I think is an app kit thing on I don't know what the NS workspace is. Is it like the app runtime? Um one shared in works by object per app. Okay, so use the class method to share access. Okay, so it is kind of like something that uh, kind of stays around while your app is running, I think. I don't know. So if I have to try this, right, the only time where I have access to app git is, let's see, in app delegate maybe? Because here, here we do use AppKit. Like AppKit is the one that gives us the NS application and, and the window, the NS window style that we launch it. Um, so before Xamarin Forms takes over, can I do this? Okay. Um, oh, see, NS Workspace, it knows it right away. Open file, known file known file I'm guessing is like a format yeah and then this is the name of the app okay so we don't want finder we want I think it's called text edit like that um, hopefully okay known file we need to give it a file name uh, so I don't know if AppKit has APIs for us to create a temporary file name or I mean I'm sure they do I, I just don't know <coughs> Excuse me. So, I mean, we we have a text file. <laughs> Let's just give it the file. Um, so, what do we call it? It was called some file, and it's it's I think it's RTF. All right. So, some file dot RTF. Yeah. Will this work? So, I, I when, when the app launches, I just want text edit to open that file I don't know let's, let's try hmm so the app opened up and nothing else happened okay breakpoint then are we even hitting it? We are hitting it. Okay. Uh, step over goes right past it. Okay. Uh, oh, maybe, hang on, hang on. Um, do I need to give it a path? Because like the, the, they talk about the file path open file unknown file yeah see your path um, I don't know if it knows to find the path because like the app workspace like the app sandbox is probably where it's looking I don't know if it knows to look in my home directory um, hold on uh, how to find a file path on Mac What? Um, 
right click on the file get info look up where the select area no that's not the file path terminal uh, I thought there was a way to hold on. Get info. This is the same same thing that they're talking about. Ah, uh, does anyone know? I mean, if we do, um, so, like, I, I don't know what this Macintosh HD users that means, like how to actually write that. Maybe like terminal will, will be the way to find out. Hold on, let me do this. Um, terminal find file path. I thought that was an easier way. If you need the file path, one of the easiest ways to uh, terminal application is to type directly Unix commands. Um, launch terminal. Drag and drop a file. Oh, really? Okay. All right. All right. Let's give it a try. So I have the terminal here, and I have the sum file. Oh, look at that. That's funny. That works. That works. Thank you. Whoever is the unknown person on the internet, that is my file path. No, not that. Like that. What? Um, what am I typing? I just need this whole thing. And we'll put the users in front. Like that. So it, it's not like MacBook Pro or the name of the home directory. It is literally users. Gonna pop over to Layla's. Hey, Salt and Burnham. Good to see you. Good to see you, brother. Yeah, go uh, go heckle Layla, and maybe we will go uh, raid her in a while. Good to see you, but I will hit you up for the show. Yes, thank you. Okay, so with this work, now I have a fully qualified path name and we are saying go open this file up on text edit. Okay, let's try this. So it should do that while the app launches, hopefully. Yes, it does, it does. Look at that. We are now able to open a text file. After years and years of computer science development, we are now able to open up a text file like magic from a desktop Blazor application. Yay! All right, but then the Blazor app just does its thing, right? Um, okay, so uh, folks, if you're just joining me, like I, I did this on, on Windows. So I opened up Notepad, wrote something, and then brought the text back over to, um, over to a Blazor app. I am just tinkering and I'm not, not sure if I can do this on a Mac, but I am at least able to open up a file and I'm able to uh, let like text edit open the file. But I don't know if I can just like close and read that same thing because like C Sharp has APIs for that. Uh, so let's close this like uh, that as well. Like C Sharp has APIs to do that stuff. Um, I, I just don't know if I can do this uh, from a Mac, um, but let's try. So I don't need the terminal anymore. Go away and we are back on our blazer land. So clearly that's not something we will do from app delegate because this is a Mac specific thing. Where would I even write that? So this is the uh, 
the main razor thing. But there is also an index razor, which is where we wrote it on Blazerland. Um, can we write the same code and just hope that it works? Um, oh boy, I wish I had not closed down my Windows machine because then I could have just used it. Um, yes, we can't launch Notepad here because it's text edit. And I don't know if we have the same, maybe we can, who knows? Not Notepad, but like text edit. Uh, okay, so what, what am I typing? Using, so sorry, you're gonna see me type in the same thing again, system.io. And we had put a button here. And we had said, do native stuff. And we had a H3, which essentially showed a message, right? And then let's write some Blazor code. We're going to define that message here. Um, and we are going to define a method. Do native stuff. If I can type, there we go. And I've learned that you have to have on click at on click equals this stuff. Okay. Um, why is this off like so? Okay. Um, so now we can say message equals hello world um, this is funny like we all use hello world so much somebody had done a podcast on the beginnings of this hello world thing like where this thing even got started so let, let's take a look if this one works and then we'll try to open that file in text edit all right so that file opens up because the app kit thing is in place do native stuff hello world yeah okay that all works then that's perfect all right here we go so um, see now I, I don't need to use that temp file thing I'm gonna open up that screenshot one more time that I had taken on somebody who's smarter than me way smarter um, from Microsoft actually so we don't need the file temp path uh, we don't need to write a file we just need to maybe read the file Okay, let's see. Uh, so, and I, I don't know how to like programmatically close text edit, but let's let's try reading it first. So file dot read all text. This is C sharp, right? This is C sharp APIs. Now, hopefully, C sharp is smart. Now, what would be very interesting is if we run the same code on iOS, and I'm guessing that's going to get all confused because on iOS you are within a sandbox. You can only read and write files that are in that sandbox. And then we'll have to like embed that file as a resource in our Xamarin app and then hopefully it can read it. But this is on desktop, so we are a little better off. Um, okay, so now it expects that path, all right, uh, which was this path, right, that we just wrote. So that, that was a new shortcut that I learned. So apparently you can just drag a text file or any file into terminal and it'll give you the path. So that's a nifty little trick. Um, but back on index.razor, if I'm just gonna drop this in here, can message just read that thing, which will now read like some text and just magically work? That's three, let's see, start. Okay, so text edit opened up. Uh, oh no, I haven't clicked on the button yet. Oh, no, it, it's gonna not like continually read if I just keep it open, it's gonna get confused. Um, but let's see. So this is the file. Ah! <laughs> it's complaining. No, wait, it's not complaining. 
it is it is reading something like see it's reading helvetica like that it's reading the fonts it is not complaining it is literally reading fonts and colors oh there it is look at that look at that this is funny okay so we did open the file and we read more than that was intended oh dancing is saying it's an rtf which is not the same as a text file aha uh aha -huh, uh -huh. okay so it is rich text so it has all of this info but we are able to read it yeah so it has this is very interesting like it has ANSI, like the encoding um i don't know where the cocoa platform comes in like that's probably what it's using to read it uh, like the character set is Helvetica. This is in, 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 enticing. Blue, red, blue, blue clean. Ex expanded color libs. Um, okay, so it read a bunch of stuff and then it read some text. This is interesting. So you can do uh, yours using the metadata in the RTF. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely right. Um, absolutely right. So the, the code works. It's the same code that we wrote in Windows. Uh, now we are reading a rich text file, so it has some more things. And now we are reading some text, which is exactly what we wanted. So now, like, you, you see what's happening here. Like, we are running a Blazor app, but we have the capacity to step a little outside of the sandbox because we are running this um, as a desktop application. And we can go like knock on other processes and bring some stuff over so i think that this is the whole point like you're able to do some native stuff even though it's a hybrid blazor app so um i don't know if i can actually launch text edit from a blazor app like the way we launched um notepad uh we did uh var p i don't know this might be scary <laughs> to do uh file path um how do i make the file look at that exact path or maybe we can just open that give it that path let's let's try this so if i do var i think p is for a process equals um system dot diagnostics dot process now this is the whole thing can c sharp as a process get access to mac processes for other things start all right so this is where we had said notepad now we're going to say text edit right I'm, I'm completely off the hooks here i have no idea if this is something you can at all do and instead of giving it the file we're going to give it this whole path right um so we are asking, let's actually turn off this one because this one is launching uh, text edit anyways. We just don't want AppKit to launch text edit because we, we, we can't access AppKit stuff once we are in Xamarin Forms land cause, or .NET MAUI land because AppKit has no business here. All we are doing is using the NS application window to launch our app and then AppKit is off, off the off the table um, but here if we can launch it from C sharp then we can interact with it a little bit more like we did with notepad um, and then we are asking it to read the file okay well, let's try um, well we don't know if we can make it exit oh, hang on what was the other thing let's try this one first and then we'll do the wait for exit all right let's do that uh, what a break point. I'm scared here. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, here we go. Do native stuff. Text edit that. Step over that. Uh... <laughs> okay. Uh, cannot find the specified file. Like by file, do you mean you didn't find my file or you didn't find the app? I um, I have no idea. It's like this is not probably meant to work. Um, I 
I don't know. This is, uh, I don't know like what it's failing on, so it's hard to say which one it's not finding. Wrapper remoting invoke with check, system diagnostics. I don't know. I don't know. This might be a, a stretch. <clears throat> but at least, um, excuse me, we are able to read. Uh, yeah. Ed Sharbon is here to um, to heckle me. Ed, this works fine on um, on Windows, okay? So you should be happy. What's happening? No, that's not what I wanted to highlight. Where, where was your rest in peace message that went away? That's fine. What's happening? Well, what's happening is <laughs> you blame JavaScript. So for Ed's honor, we got to do this, okay? So hang in there, folks. Hang in there. We got to fire up my VM again because the Blazor guru is here. Maybe he can tell us something that I don't know. Um, so what's happening is we are running Blazor on desktop um, through uh, the Blazor mobile hybrid uh, apps. Uh, the bindings thing uh, runs on Xamarin Forms right now, but uh, eventually will run on Maui. And we are trying to test how native can you get. And I found somebody do a hilarious demo and I'm trying to recreate that. We were able to do that just fine on Windows, but Mac is a slightly different story. So uh, no, actually, hang on. Don't do preview. Don't do preview. Go away. Go away. Yeah, let's do regular Visual Studio. You should have been watching the whole time because all we know <laughs> needs to learn about Blazor. Yes. All right. Let's Blazor chat. So uh, this is the same uh, Blazor app, Ed, uh, that I've built. Uh, it's just a boilerplate thing where we had some uh, signal on our backend stuff, but now we're doing some native stuff on it. So let me show you what works on Windows, and then I, I, I don't know, and I'm confident that it's not meant to work like this on a Mac, but here, here's the demo, okay? So this is Blazor running inside of a desktop application. So everything here is web UI, everything under that is Blazor. And what we are doing here is using system IO and we have a button that launches this method. And in that we go to system. Um, oh, hey, look at all your blazer and the power gloves. Thanks for making stuff fly around. Uh, we are reading a file. We are giving it a temp file name. We are reading it and we are closing it. And then we are displaying that message, which is actually a hilariously fun demo to show the native stuff. So, Here's what I got so far, and and this works, okay? So we have Blazor boilerplate. Uh, this stuff is native. This stuff is all Blazor. But from Blazor, we can invoke native stuff. So now we have Notepad because that's a temporary file. Uh, so here to, we're going to order, uh, or we can honor. Uh, hello, Ed. Uh, the if I can type today, the Blazor King, okay? And <laughs> we're going to save that. We're going to wait for Notepad to exit. And then it shows up on Blazor on a desktop application because now uh, it's a little bit native because it lets you do that. So this is what I'm able to do for Windows where it gets the temporary file name. We have a uh, system process starting up Notepad to open that file. I just don't know how to do that on a, on a Mac. But we are able to at least read from a Mac. Uh, like. If, if I do the same diagnostic process start text edit, which uh, Ed is notepad for uh, like a very crude notepad for Mac, uh, I can't launch text edit it looks like, uh, but I will read a file. So um, <laughs> Flutter, watch your back. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Uh, Flutter is a whole different game, whole different game. <laughs> it's, it's a lot of skia, it's uh, yeah. Um, the thing is, like, yeah, I can launch text edit and I can point to a file, but I can't, like, I can't programmatically launch text edit from C sharp, um, which is still okay. I mean, we are we are interacting with the native stuff here clearly, but let, let's see if I can actually make some edits to the file if I can save it and then read it. All right. Same app, now we have the Mac side working as compared to the Windows side. Okay, so you see that we, we are able to launch text edit, okay? Um, and we're gonna say, hello, Ed. 
and we're going to save it and now if we do the native stuff it should read that yes it does now um, Dan pointed out like this is um, this is using um, an RTF file so it reads a whole bunch of things like the character set and colors and all that but take a look text some text hello ed so it, it reads that file so i just don't know how to launch text edit manually or like programmatically from uh, a blazer app um, but that's the only thing i don't know okay so it, it works um ed is saying can you run the mahoney app as a su all right hold on what is su sorry i'm just not cool enough to understand acronyms what is su So um, it doesn't have rights to, maybe it doesn't have rights to launch, yeah. Um, no, it, it does have the right to, well, um, called sudo. <laughs> See, Ed, you're, you're not used to speaking the Mac language like we are. Uh, I don't know what SU means. You should just say sudo, super user, okay. Um, the app itself doesn't, um, I don't know. Uh, I don't know, like if, if I run Visual Studio as uh, as an, I mean, the, the, the whole admin thing is not as clear cut on a Mac. Um, so, hang on, I, I don't need, I don't need Windows anymore. It's just sitting there chewing through memory. But any, anyways, I mean, um, so the, the thing that I'm trying to get to is on, on a Mac, like Visual Studio cannot be <clears throat> run on elevated privileges. I think you could try open a text edit some file. Um, Chicken of the scene. That is a funny name. Uh, no, I, I am able to open text edit. I just cannot open text edit from C sharp. So, so like this is the C sharp stuff. Um, I don't know how to run that. Well, I, I mean, if we run Visual Studio from a admin thing, but I mean, that's not going to ensure that the app is running under sudo. Um, and uh, where we are saving the file, I suppose we could run, we could go find the DLL and run it. Um, So, uh, chicken of the scene, like, I am able to open text edit. It's just, like, C Sharp is having a hard time finding out what text edit means, because I can do this from, like, my app delegate file. I can, once you are in app kit space, we have NS workspace, and it knows how to find stuff. I can I can launch other things from from app kit. I just don't know how to do it from C Sharp yet. Um, but, I, I mean, I think, I think we have proved the point that we are trying, that we can interact with other native apps from Blazor. Um, because when we build this, like Blazor Chat, let me let me take a look as to how this is being built. Um, in my projects, and then the sum file, by the way, is just sitting right there. So if I look at, let me make this bigger. And if there's any possibility of running this under elevated permissions, so Blazor Chat, where is that? Oh, I think it's in my CLI projects, Blazor Chat. So if I look at the macOS build bin debug, um, it's got a whole bunch of DLLs. And all of the .NET DLLs are right here. Um, Xamarin DLLs. Now this is, so this is not Catalyst yet. It might be once .NET MAUI is ready. So it gives you a Blazor Chat DLL and then a Mac OS. Like the Mac OS, we should be able to just like run this, I think. Yeah, so we are able to just launch that. Um, so are you saying I can do this from sudo and have a different result? I doubt it, but you know, just to prove Ed's point, we can try it. Um, no, I didn't want to comment that out, sorry. Yeah, let that stay and we're gonna not do this from NS Workspace. This is the one we know it works. So we'll do a build so that way 
uh, we have fresh bits. If you want to process dot star directly, you probably need applications. Oh, I see. I see. I see. That's a good point. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, okay, Ed. Um, DLLs on a Mac are a thing. We have been doing it. What is not a thing is DLLs over WebAssembly. That's something you and your uh, band of Blazor folks have brought on where we are shipping DLLs through our browser. Um, but this is maybe what I need because it's not able to find the process. That is a very good point. Okay, so before I try doing it through sudo, I, sh I should try that. That is a very good point. Chicken of the sea, great point. All right, so, um, oh, where am I typing? All right. Applications. Oh, wait, it's on the text edit app? Okay. I didn't know that. See, chat room, you're helpful. I'm just literally copying from what you said. I have no idea where it lives. Why is it an app and then another contents? Mac OS. That, right? So now I'm giving it the path to text edit and my file to open. And then I'm reading the file. You think this will work? If not, we can we can um, figure out more with the path. Maybe that was that like it just could not find the process or 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 the the app to launch. What is this music I'm playing? It's funky. Yeah, maybe it's fine. All right, so do native stuff. No, can't find specified file. Okay, we're close. Uh, we might go down this path a little bit. Where is exactly is text edit setting? Applications. Why is it empty? <laughs> go back to country. Yeah, this is this is a little much. Uh, all right, country it is. Oh, um, I got. Five, ten more minutes before I have to go get the kid from school. Um, at least we have a school to send kids to. Um, some other states and folks are not so lucky. There was a hilarious thing where uh, uh, California opened up schools after a long, long time, and like they made a GIF of uh, somebody dropping off their kid. Like uh, the the minivan pulls in, just knocks off a whole bunch of stuff, and just like throws the kid <laughs> to the school. Oh, poor kids. Uh, but uh, you can't blame kids or parents. It's it's hard on everybody. Uh, that's something you should not think of. Are you going to say again, huh? What are you guys talking about? I felt like I was in the Matrix. Yes, that was kind of Matrix music. Okay, uh, checking off the scene. Um, I am being dumb here because I cannot find where text edit lives. Okay, so let's find text edit and then we'll try it in pseudo mode. Um, where is my text edit? Uh, oh, it was actually uh, um, Jimmy Kimmel uh, on his late night show. He had a gif of like his wife <laughs> dropping the kids off to school. It's like shoves them out and just like, uh, yeah, just runs away the mom. Um, what, what, wait, wait a second. What is Ted Bundy? How did I end up with that? It, <laughs> it just, uh, it's funny. So when you search for Ted, apparently on a Mac, your first choice is Ted Bundy, second choice is Ted Cruz, Ted Talks. Uh, somehow maybe Ted Talks should be up there instead of Ted Bundy first. Okay. All right, Mac. Where is this? Sam gets matrix references. I, I'm okay. So Matrix, I, I grew up with. You, you just cannot bring up '80s references to me. You just cannot. Um, where is my text edit sitting? Why can I not find it? Where are my apps? Oh, it's in the applications folder. Sorry, I am completely brain frozen today. Text is sitting right there. Isn't that not right? Chicken of the scene? I, I don't know. 
What if I did just this? What if I just did this? Would it be able to open? Alright, hold on. Uh, Dan Siegel, your post got... <laughs> Your post got uh, modded, uh, but I'll, I'll allow it. <laughs> no. Okay, I, I don't know where to find text edit apparently, or whether C Sharp is able to launch Mac processes in the first place. I don't know. But I mean, uh, we, we can play around more with this. Um, Here's the last thing I will try, okay? Uh, I gotta run in seven minutes. Hey, Copper Beardy, good to see you. I hope you're feeling better. I know, like last week or the midweek before, you were uh, not streaming, but good to see your beard. Good to see you. Hey, hey. Um, okay, last thing I will try, okay? So if I go in here and that's where the app is sitting, I'm, what if I just launched it in sudo? I, I don't know if I can even do that. But like to satisfy Ed that we're not lacking any permissions thing. Let's try that. I need to get this thing. I had it at one point, like where you can launch um, terminal on whichever folder you have. So you don't have to keep doing this stuff. Um, but I have lost that program. I have to go find it again. Let me make things a little bigger so you can see. Okay, now country music is also being funky. That's fine. All right, so where are we? So we need to be in Blazor chat, and we need to be in Blazor chat uh, dot mac os slash bin slash debug. Right. All right, here. Now that Mac OS is the file we want. Um, chat room, what are you talking about? Uh, yeah, everyone needs furniture. This is not the type of furniture Dan is looking for all the time. Uh, you can also drag the chicken or jeans. You can also drag a file folder from Finder. Really? I, could, I didn't know that. From a Finder. Oh, I see. Interesting. So you don't have to type this. Okay. I'm learning, folks. I, I am new to this world of computers, as you can tell. I don't know anything. All right. So, sudo laser chat dot mac os. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Internet. Don't see my password. Done. Ow. What? Why can't I do that? It is a Mac file, just let me launch it. <laughs> okay, so it's not launchable through command line. I, I don't know. I can double click on it to run this darn thing. Okay. Oh, okay. I. So, Ed, I don't know how to give it... Oh, start! Oh, 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 okay. See, I am really just learning everything today. I didn't know you can do start on a Mac. Eh? All right, Blazor chat dot... What would I do without you, chat room? Uh, can't do sudo? What? Time to start, Dan. Or maybe it's just me. Okay. Parallels, don't install your thing right now. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> on the Mac, it's open, not start. Oh boy. Okay. It's open. Differences between Windows and Mac. So many differences. I'm willing to try whatever you want me to. Does not exist. What do you mean it doesn't exist? It's right there.
can't open. So I don't know. I don't know how else to launch this. We can double click on that thing, but doesn't let me launch it. Okay, this country thing is getting a little much. How about classical? This calm it down, people. <laughs> Dan is bouncing between so many operating systems and working with people in so many time zones. So I don't even know where I'm at. Yeah, operating systems. So, so I, I go between Windows and Mac quite a bit, and they're funny. Like my shortcuts and my muscle memory gets all confused. I hope, Dan, you're not running Linux as an OS because that is hardcore. Um, I have sympathies for people, well, not sympathies. Like I'm in awe of people who run Linux as their main OS. Uh, I mean, VS Code works, but that's probably it. Uh, no, I, I should not be saying that out loud, but I, I have respect for you. So anyways, um, I'm at time at 11.20 my time. I have to go get the kid, but... Um, oh, hey, <laughs> just as I talk of leaving, Layla is here. And Layla is probably... Hold on. Hold on. Um, reading with a party. So where is my, where's my stuff? This is going to be fun. So we're running the raid music on top of classical country music. Yeah, it's just beautiful. Hey, Leila, thank you for coming over with your with your big party. Uh, Copper Beardy is back and Silicon Orchid. Hey, Sam. Korova Milkman, that's a fun name. So, hey, good to see you all. Thank you, thank you for the follows. You're catching me at the trail end where uh, things are failing, but uh, hey folks uh, who are just coming in, what we tried out today, let me just do a recap. Because um, I've been streaming for an hour and a half now, I have to go get the kid. But here, here's where we started. In .NET 6, uh, and my music is all wonky today. <laughs> what is this stuff that we are playing? Let's go back to ambient music, jeez. We, we did country, we did all kinds of stuff. Oh, hey, Luz is here. Hello, Luz. Always love writing to see a Zamagon. Zamagon, that's a thing. That's a thing. We're calling us ourselves Zamagons. Uh, that is a thing. So Luz and Dan and me, we, we love being on um, in the Xamarin world and when we are Zamagons, apparently. So what we were doing today, and I can, I can show you this really quick, um, but Blazor now runs on desktop and on iOS and on Android and on Windows and desktop. So um, these are hybrid apps. You can mix and match a little bit. Um, so if I do this uh, one more time here, just to kind of show you folks, um, you can launch Blazor um, within, uh, uh, like this is a, essentially a Xamarin Forms project uh, in our app delegate file we are asking AppKit, which is the uh, which is the Mac thing, to launch a window, and then we are um, newing up Xamarin Forms, and um, we are letting that do its thing. So if I if I run this again, just for those of you who just joined, and I'm going to comment out that line. So essentially, you are going to see Blazor. So in in our main .razor file, I know Layla does a bunch of Blazor as well. Um, <laughs> Ed Sherman is doing some VR, yeah. Uh, Ed is in VR land, doesn't even want to talk to us anymore. Uh, but uh, apparently all of this stuff is native and everything that you see in Blazor Web View is essentially using Web View 2 on Windows and the WK Web View on, on a Mac. So everything inside of that can just be a straight up um, Blazor application. So if I run this, what we were trying to see is how native can these apps get and on Windows it's actually a a very fun demo. You can launch Notepad. You can um, you can bring some text back. But here, here's the app, and uh, this is like everything here down is pretty much straight up Blazor. Um, so you have the increment counters like you do. So this is native stuff, and then that counter component. That's a component that's now shared between Blazor, which is Blazor Razor syntax, and then the native stuff. Well, we Layla was doing .NET six and Blazor server. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is Blazor. What's this used to be called Blazor Mobile Binding? Still is. It's still running on um, Xamarin Forms. So this is not quite on .NET 6 yet, but they are redoing uh, Blazor Mobile Hybrid apps to run on .NET Maui, 
when they're going to take away the Xamarin Forms bootstrapping for now and then replace it with .NET MAUI. Uh, but this is the thing. Uh, and what we did was in our home, we were able to give it a button. Now this on Windows, we are able to open up a new file uh, in Notepad. We are able to write something, wait for Notepad to close. And when we come back, we can bring that text over um, for uh, into blazor land here uh, we we are struggling to open up text edit but at least i mean we have proven what it is so we're going to say hello layla here uh, and save the file we're just not able to launch text edit uh, which is the notepad for mac quite from c sharp process yet uh, but when i say do native stuff it will actually read the file and it'll say hello layla right here it's a it's a rich text file so it reads a bunch of other like fonts and other colors types thing but at least it's able to open and read that file so from blazor hybrid on desktop you are able to do some native stuff um, you are able to launch uh, other processes and at least you're not confined to the browser sandbox you can do some stuff outside because it is meant to be a native app um, that gives you access to like xamarin essentials to do native stuff on iOS or Android, as well as on Windows and Mac. So that's what we've been up to. And unfortunately, uh, it's 11.23 my time. I have to go get my kid. Uh, Luce is saying, I'm guessing sandboxing is preventing you from opening another app. Um, no, well, the thing is like, you, you see this text edit, like this was launched with it. So Luce, just for, just for you, so in our app delegate file, like we have app kit right here and we have NS workspace. So we are able to launch uh, text edit and ask it to open this file, but this is before Xamarin Forms takes over. So I don't know if it's the sandbox, but I cannot launch text edit from C sharp. So again, if I run this again, um, you will see that text edit opens up like with my app. So I'm able to launch text edit. I just cannot do it from Blazor yet. Maybe it's the same sandbox, but I was, I was able to do it from Windows and open up Notepad from Blazor app. Um, but yeah, could be could be a multiple uh, set of things. But at least we're able to read from a different file. Uh, um, and, and this reading part is literally in index.razor, we are able to use system.io and just read file.txt and that rich text file. So we're able to read that at least. So. Yeah, that's the thing. Um, I, I saw somebody do this funny demo and um, it's it's really fun to be able to see and do some native stuff from, from Blazor. And I think it's just very early days and um, this story of Blazor on desktop is just gonna get more and more flushed out as, um, yeah, you know, this, thanks. And thanks for the follow folks. Uh, thanks for all the love. Um, yeah, the, the kid. You don't want my kid to just stand alone in the parking lot and thinking that mom and dad abandoned him. There is nobody to pick him up. So sad. So I have to go pick him up. Um, he, he goes to school for like two and a half hours each day, which is something. At least gives him exposure to other kids and life outside of just being stuck at home all day. So um, that's it uh, from me. I really have to run, but Leila, thank you for uh, joining with all of your folks and uh, in the chat room, uh, Luz and Ed and Dan has been sticking out all through. Uh, so Dan, thank you and Chris and everybody else. Uh, I love you all. And uh, I shall be back next Thursday doing the same things. Maybe I'll have a guest, uh, but uh, <laughs> exposure. I don't know what that meant, uh, but anyways. This is all good and uh, I have to run folks, but thank you so much for sticking around and uh, seeing me tinker with some native stuff with Blazor Hybrid. So until the next stream, um, stay safe, stay productive, stay healthy. And uh, yeah, Ed Sherman is still uh, still on, but uh, I think it goes on like another five, 10 minutes or maybe at noon Eastern is when the VR thing is. Uh, he, he doesn't talk to us in real world anymore. It's all VR. Uh, but uh, yeah, come and uh, watch Ed and Alyssa back uh, on this channel doing VR stuff slightly later on from now on. So until then, yeah, stay, stay well and I shall see you on the next day. Yeah, bye-bye.